Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Come On, Get a Happy Hour. Oh, we don't have to pay for this. I played music. I stole the song from Keith Partridge. But it's the same song. We're in the same double wide, except now we're coming on uh, Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights on YouTube. So you can just sit in the privacy of your, your living room and be uh, drinking a little cocktail because we, uh, we do a drinking game. So we have a little drinking word. I think the word tonight is going to be old school. All three of my guests are old school friends of mine, and they love old school music. I'm playing some old school. Uh, I used to be on the wheels of skills back in the day. But let me show you who we got tonight, people. Superstar lineup. We got a pretty lady. She's not coming on yet. I'm just going to introduce her first. And when we first did a gig a couple years ago, I think, she said, do you have any disco? I'm like, Stevie D, the D stands for disco. <laughs> what do you mean do I have disco? <laughs> You should be down. I wake up in the morning going, you can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm like, oh, man. I wore the puka shells for her tonight. So we got this lady right here, Antoinette Perrigine. Love, love, love her. Her energy is infectious. You're going to see that in a minute. We got a, a guy that introduced both of us. We got New Jersey's bad boy. How you doing? We got Mike Marino. All right. He's going to talk about Ben Laden. He's got one of the most downloaded comedy clips of all time. We're going to talk about that from the Byron Allen Show. And we got uh, this dude I've only known for 20-plus years in comedy. He's a big dude, but he's a short dude. But he's got a you know, big, big personality, big talent. His name is Bruce Fine, and he's coming. Woo -hoo! So we got some old-school music kicking here. We're having a good time. We're going to get the party started. And my first guest, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I met her a couple of years ago. From Mike Marino, he introduced us, and I'm glad he did, because we're, we're, we're the three amigos now. So we rock the ha ha <laughs> every That's couple so of true. months. And I do like crazy, like Photoshopping, and I put our pictures on, on ads from the 70s, but they could have been taken yesterday, because we're still, you know, we're bringing it like that. We got the boogie fever, and I wore my puka shells for her tonight. Everybody, please give it up for the lovely, talented, funny lady, Antoinette Perrigé! Oh, no, wrong one. I had it up upside down. Hold on. There you go. <laughs> What's up, Stevie? Did you see that, what I did there, Antoinette? That was very nice. Very tough. That We got a high budget. We got, like, multi-million dollar budget. I got a sound truck right outside. I'm sorry. I know you've been interviewing, like, professional comics lately. Sinbad, George Lopez. I know. Tammy Pescatelli, Jimmy Schubert, Mike oh. Marino. Mike I know. Marino. You're coming She's on next, okay. Stevie. She's got a great show called Antoinette and Friends, right? Born, born out of desperation. Because my show at the Canyon got, got canceled on the 23rd of April. That I was going to be your first. I just, I just made a, a connection. Wait, April 23rd, yeah. It got canceled, but I was like, are you fucking kidding? Can I curse on your show? Yeah, of no. course. I prefer oh. it. Oh, why are you fucking kidding <laughs> I me? encourage I like, you. <laughs> <laughs> they knew I was coming. No, yeah. I just went, I didn't know what to do. I was just like, are you kidding me? It was like my big, we were going to start touring, and I was going to bring on all these comics, and it got canceled. And I was like, I ain't letting that happen. I was just so pumped. So, you I know, I just started doing a talk show, just kept it going, you know? I did the same thing because I'd never done this Instagram or the YouTube talk shows. And, and I had a, I guess they call it a vodcast like five years ago, which was a video podcast, it was, but it was in a studio. So yeah. I was dependent upon other people to go in and then they would push the buttons and, and I would try to be funny and bring my funny friends. Um, but during this quarantine, I had to learn new skills. And I heard a good quote at the beginning of the quarantine. It said, if you don't learn a new skill by, during the quarantine, it wasn't for the lack of hustle. It wasn't for the lack of time, because we all say we're too busy. It wasn't for the lack of time, it was for lack of hustle. So you and I, we got the hustle, and we learned how to do this shit. I appreciate that you say that, because I think, uh, I, I've been thinking about that a lot. I'm like a one-woman show. I mean, I do have a team now, which I'm really grateful for. You have Judy. Yeah. You have yeah. to have somebody behind the scenes helping. But, you know, a lot of people that I know who are our generation or older, I'm always like reaching out to help. I'm like, you know what? It's not an easy learning curve. 
and you you really have to kind of figure it out as you go. And I'm grateful that I kind of managed to do that, and I always extend a hand to all the old side. The old timers are like, "What do I need? What's that? Do you need a ring light? Wow, well, do I need a tripod?" And I'm like, "What?" Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, do I need a microphone? I had a comic on here that actually was holding a microphone that wasn't plugged in. We had a little glitch there. Speaking of tech. Technical I stuff. know, right? Just, just as we were saying that, Bleep. and then I get blamed for it, of course. But you know what? It's your energy, your effervescent, Stevie. I'm too, I'm too powerful. I overheated this, this, this feed that we're doing right here. I love it, and you know what? I have to tell you, Stevie. This is like my opportunity to say thank you to you because the ha ha was a rocking show, and you always made it feel like a family and like. I don't know, it was just like a party. And I and I do laugh at myself because I was like, I said to Mike, I'm gonna do the show, you know, because he's the one who told me to come down. And I'm like, you know, I, but I need disco. I need disco at the top. You're like, you got and the right guy. I was guy. like, oh, just talk to Stevie. He'll get you disco. And meanwhile, you're looking at me like, are you high? Of course I have disco. What song do you want? I am disco. What are you talking about? You see I the know. feather hair? You see the I feather know. Keith Partridge haircut? You have to ask I love about it. disco? I love it. You know, I was talking to somebody at the Canyon. I think Keith Partridge, Keith, uh, David Cassidy's last show was at the Canyon Club. I so that. was Todd Rickles. And there was a lot of last shows at the Canyon. But, and I saw yeah. Greg Allman there recently, like before he died, not too long before he died. Yeah. So the, the play, it's, you're, you're involved with the Canyon Club, which is pretty close to me. I and know. I know. I always, I always, like, text you pictures of I'm at, like, the, uh, the place, uh, what is it, the, the – uh, What's the shit? The gelatin stuff. <laughs> Wait, uh, uh, what is it called? I don't know. There's a place called tea. Yeah, tea yeah. Pro? I don't know. Something that's right there in that little area. Really good, like really Georgia. Italian. I can say that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. Can say gelato. Yeah. But the Canyon Club, where you're involved in, is one of the like premier spots. Like out here where we live, we don't get a lot of big name acts because there's no venues around us. But the Canyon Club. You either have Vince Neil or you always have somebody big time in there, you know? I mean, really, that's actually where I met Sinbad. And we were like immediately like, hey, I don't know, you know, it's like, you know, you vibe with each other. And that's how I met him. And he performed there a lot uh, to a packed house. So that's kind of how Did you meet Sinbad him, but at the Canyon Club? I met Sinbad the first time at the Canyon Club. Yeah. I met him probably two years ago. And we just like vibe together. And then I knew his uh, uh, manager, assistant manager. And so, yeah, and I'm really lucky to be involved with them. Plus, it's really been a very enriching experience to go to work. I mean, really, I can go to work one night and it's Ted Nugent. And then I can go the next night and it's Joan Baez. You know, we used to be like, I've lived here for almost 30 years, Antoinette. I came here as a kid, you know, yeah. not as a kid, but like 21. And so I have all these friends in comedy that things weren't, you know, there's no diversity. Like you, you can have your beliefs, you have your beliefs. They knew yeah. I'm a hillbilly, whatever. And, and we just talked about comedy. The common ground was, was comedy, but now you gotta, you know, and, and everything's censored what you can talk about. And, and like, as you know, you've done one of my shows at the Ha Ha with Mike and I, and like, I try not to book anybody that's going to talk about politics. Because I think we're all the same, funny as funny. Doesn't matter where you come from. Just bring it and bring a good attitude and a positive attitude. Do a couple hair flips and we'll have a good time. <laughs> like, I don't talk about politics. You got to register to vote and stuff. Like, I got outstanding warrants. I can't be talking about politics and voting and shit. I, I totally agree with you. And I, ha I do have to say that I... I think it's really hard that we can't talk about, we can't be free to talk about the things we want to talk about, but it gets even worse than that, which is why I'm doing my show and yeah. keeping the conversation going. We've actually lost our ability to perform for the moment in yeah. a big way. And I feel, I feel for entertainers and comedians who rely on a live audience. It's almost like all at once, your whole, not only livelihood, but you're also your identity because we yeah. come alive on stage. That's who we are. Yeah, so yeah. who are we if we're not on stage? And that's a very kind of an uncomfortable feeling. And I, I think that's why my interviews with comics have been pretty emotional and pretty deep because it's a deep time for entertainers who 
rely on an audience to to communicate and, and have their art heard. So yeah, I feel I'm happy that you're doing what you're doing too. It's important. Well, thank you. And like I said, I love your infectious energy because you want music, you want fun music, and you want to come on stage and right away your smile lights up the room. And I love that. I think I think it's it's it is like contagious. So if you go on stage, you're smiling, you're having fun. I'm here for fun. Turn off the news. We're not going to talk about politics. We're here to party and talk about what a pain in the ass our kids are or whatever, you know, whatever's going on. But we're just there to have a good time. And I love that about you from the get go. Thank you. I love that about you too, Stevie. I think it's like Thank a really you, great thing. Oh, so nice. I've never the had room. a bad night there. I've always flied out of there like, oh, he puts on a good show. Puts me on a good show. I can't wait to be back, actually. It's all Marino's fault. He brought me out of retirement because I, I chilled out for a few years. And I went to see Mike. Every time Mike was in town, he would say, hey, just come down to the Laugh Factory. I'm like, ah, I'm like the mafia. Like, oh, no, I'm out. I'm good. <laughs> he did witness, that to protection, me witness protection out here in the valley with my kids, you know, being a dad. Even though I still drive a Trans Am, I'm trying to <laughs> be low key. But I, uh, I, went to, I went to see him one night and I'm like, I called him the next day. I'm like, you son of a bitch. You got me. <laughs> it's like, I hope you and he brought you back in. Ah, he brought me back in. And he was like, I was, I was hoping happy. I would. Well, I love you so much. And so your kids are older, right? You got two what, older teenage boys. I have two boys, boys, 18 and 16. And that's also been, I know you have little ones. It's, it's been a really beautiful thing to kind of have to be together. And, yeah. and you know, we've, we've had experiences together that we wouldn't have had. And a lot of conversations about what is the world they're stepping into and how to navigate that. And yeah. um, I'm really, I'm really, and it's also just brought, you know, the whole family back together. So it's, it's, a, it's a cool, it's a cool thing. And it's, but it's, I feel sad sometimes because I'm like, what's going to happen? And yeah. it's like they're living at a time when all of the old institutions are kind of breaking down. Yeah. And I do think the new ones are rising up at the same time, but it's a bit chaotic. And so yeah. here's the thing. I don't, as a parent, you as a parent we don't even know how to tell them how to navigate it because it's never happened before yeah. i mean i mean i know pandemics and have happened but not like this on a global scale so yeah. it's hard to say what how to how to advise them and how to guide them so you know i take it one day at a time i yeah. love i love you stevie because so every time i see your posts it's very um just you're very very optimistic and it's all about you know, bringing people together. So I appreciate that so much. And that's why I always say yes to you because it's the vibe that I well, like. Thank you. Well, I like to, I like to have fun. I mean, I grew up like, you know, in, in poverty and food stamps. So I was always optimistic. Like I wake up every day and go, hey, it's a party. Let me get my blow dryer, my puka shells. It's all good. I don't need money. Man, let's have a party. So during the quarantine, one thing I loved about this is I was doing TikTok videos with my kids. We're doing dance videos. They're like, Dad, okay, we're a little too much. <laughs> They're like, okay, super dad. Do you realize what a gift that is? That is such a gift. I love it so They're much. I remember you know? that forever. It's so beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. I love to pull up at school and pick up my daughter with the T-tops off, and uh, they look at me like, hey, you look like a ecstasy dealer. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and then my daughter jumps into Trans Am, and I go, you know the drill. You know what to do. And she goes, stranger danger. And I burn out and take off, and they're like, Shit, 911, that shit. How <laughs> I old pulled are that they? shit again. <laughs> How old are the two, the two of them? They're two, right? They're, my son just turned 12 and my daughter's 10. So there's, you know, they're still talking to me. So I appreciate that. That's good. They will always talk to you, Stevie. They're, you're not the kind of parent that they're going to feel like they can't communicate with. I have to tell you. I, I pretty, well, pretty thank pretty you. And about that. Your boys are strapping and handsome and, uh, so if they want to borrow the Trans Am for prom or something like that. Let me know. I have to tell you, they love Trans Ams, Camaros. My husband and I, when we first got together, we were Tony and Tina and Tony and Tina's wedding. I don't know oh, if that's no. familiar with that show. Yeah, that's how we met. Tony and and we bought the car. We actually bought the car. You that did? We drove away with. And it was a red Camaro, cherry red Camaro. And then we bought another Camaro. Yeah, I mean, we're Guidos. I mean, I like to yeah, think like that. I'm all fancy pants, but I'm not <laughs> all fancy. You know, from Brooklyn. <laughs> That's what I always argue with Mike about. He's like, Jersey. I'm like, Jersey is Camaro, bro. I'm from Kentucky. We're Trans Am. I'm like, 
That's why my license plate says the Kentucky Porsche. But the two worlds can come together, man, for the greater they cause. They can. Greater they cause can. Disco and hair flips. <laughs> well, I love it. I can't wait to do hit the stage with you again. Oh, you'll be you'll be doing you'll be hitting the camera with me too. I'm gonna have you on my show. Ask Let's do it. friends. Let's do it. Wear my evil Knievel old school shirt for you, uh, my puka shells. I appreciate that so much. Don't think I don't notice that. I, I notice the puka Thank I'm you, love. Tell them where they can find Johnny Walker you. right now. Hold on. Oh, I forgot the drinking word. I think the drinking word should be what? Old school? Old school. Go, Johnny Walker. Old school, everybody. See all I have. This is a hydroxychloroquine with moonshine. <laughs> really, <laughs> really good for my immune system. <laughs> all right, love, love where can we find you? Tell them where they can find you. Okay, Ants, Fred, and Friends is on every Saturday or every other Saturday, depending on who we have coming on. Sometimes mama needs a break, but it's always at two o'clock in Los Angeles, five o'clock on the East Coast, 10 o'clock in the UK, 11 o'clock in Europe, and they tell me the next day in Sydney, Australia. Thank you, Stevie, for having me. I adore the, you. My you are work. the best. We're going to rock the stage again very, very soon. Antoinette Perrigine, everybody. Look at that. That makes Perrigine me feel makes good. Sense. Even though I know it's, it's, it's a laugh track, it still makes me feel good. That's how delusional I am. That's the best, love. You are the best. You and Mike and I are going to be on the stage again very, very soon. Look at that. Thank Bam. you, Stevie. I See appreciate you soon, it. All right. Bye, sweetheart. All right. Come on, get happy. All right, people. That was uh, Antoinette Perrigine. I love her. She's old school. And the next guy has been a friend of mine for more than two decades, maybe two and a half decades. And I love him so much. He's my brother. Uh, and uh, he's the one that brought me out of retirement, so you can blame him on that. He's one of the top headlining comics in the country. He did The Tonight Show, so, so many gigs. He's done more commercials probably than any actor in Hollywood. Everybody, please give it up for New Jersey's bad boy, Mike Marino. Woo, woo, woo. Look at those effects. What's happening? What's happening? Look, it's nice look to be at those here, effects, man. Buddy. Ooh, I like that hat. Good to see you. Good to see you. What's up, buddy? I'm wearing your hat here in my office in New Jersey. I'll send you my $5 royalty check for that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've been going through headshots, so here's my new headshot. I like, I like it. Look at that, buddy. That was during the Shore House years. No, this is way before then. <laughs> that was before the Shore House? Dude, I've been going through archives that I sent home to my mother when I first got to California. So from the age of 23 through like maybe 35, 36, I sent home every postcard poster. So I have the lineup at the comedy store with me, you, Joe Rogan, Andrew oh, Dice shit. Clay, Wheels wow. Parisi, Christy <laughs> McBrayer, anything you could think of, everybody and everybody. And you know, <laughs> Willie Tyler and Lester, I found oh, an incredible collection of shit. Now, is Willie Tally and Lester still around? Well, I don't know. I mean, that guy was old when we were doing it. He was a Dude. veteran. Oh, that guy's from laughing. Wasn't it cool that we, when we started, and we would work with a veteran, like someone we were like, hey, what, um, what's his name, Franklin Ajay. I don't know if you can see back there, but I have a car wash, movie car wash, movie poster right back there. I don't know if you can see it, but I remember I worked with Franklin at the Laugh Factory, and I'm like, shit, he's from one of my favorite movies, Car Wash. And I brought him on stage, I was hosting, and he smelled like weed. I'm like, yes. I wouldn't yeah. expect anything less. Well, listen, if you really think about it, a couple of guys recently started posting uh, legendary stuff, especially Jeff Scott, who was the piano player for years over at the Comedy Store, and I believe he still is. But he started putting up memorabilia way back when the place was called Ciro's. And then he was celebrating Mitzi's birthday or maybe the death of her anniversary, the anniversary of her death. I'm really not sure. Yeah. But I started selling him, sending him shit from 94, 95, 96. And he was like blown away because he didn't have that stuff. He started like, like in 2000 collecting. Oh, wow. I remember going in the kitchen of the comedy store and they have a Ciro's. Because Ciro, it was Ciro's before the comedy store. It was a mobster hangout, Frank Sinatra and all those guys. You know the story. But it had uh, Ciro's uh, Martin and Lewis live. It's probably still in the kitchen. I was like, 
son of a bitch. I want to steal that. Uh, yes. Or at least, or at least take it to Kinko's, make a copy or something. But the history in that goddamn place. Well, you know what I found also in that box. If you remember, they had albums, the history of the comedy store. Yeah. And they had like the 20 year anniversary, the 15 year oh, yeah, anniversary. Yeah, yeah. And you could buy those books there. Oh, wow. Well, I, I bought a few of them. I mailed them home to my mother. I'm going to get one real quick. I'm going to show you something else. I put this on for you to let you know okay. that I'm going to have this brother. antique in my house. I got Thank another you, one. Watch this. I am an antique. I'm a legend in my own mind. Ready for this shit? Yes, yes. What does it say? The comedy store. That you know how is. old this hat is? What's the button on there? Oh, wow. That is so cool. Stay until two. The Laugh Factory. You have the Laugh Factory and the comedy store on the same hat. I love it. And listen, in some of the other memorabilia that I have, um, it tells you the lineup, right? Yeah. Many different comedians. I got about maybe 10 different lineups. I guess I was in a couple of the um, uh, specific shows. So there was the Night of a Thousand Guidos, and then <laughs> there was a special girly girl show, whatever they had. Women in some comedy or something? Lineups, some of these yeah. lineups actually listed Chewy as the doorman. Chewy got a credit? He got a credit. Doorman Chewy. Everybody, Chewy was the doorman. Legendary. Was he Samoan or something? Big dude? <laughs> I don't know if he was Samoan, but East I think LA. he was Mexican. He was something sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely sketchy. Um, but if you remember, he was like the face of the comedy store as far as yeah. I knew. What happened to Chewy? I don't know. I, I remember him and Harris worked there all the time, and they were always in the front. But Chewy, he was a guitar player. He was an amazing yeah. player. I went to see him at House of Blues. House of Blues. I was doing the comedy store. He's like, hey, man, come to my gig, you know, Wednesday night or whatever at House of Blues. So I went to see him. And, you know, but he had a little side hustle going on, I think. <laughs> I think the side hustle was the comedy store. The main hustle was drug dealer. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, you know, you said it, not me, buddy. That's okay. Yeah, I remember cars would just pull up and stop and Chewy would go to the window and the cars would drive away. I'm like, they looking for a it, place to park? And he's like, something like that. Wasn't that something, man? I never really knew his hustle. I, I knew his hustle. I mean, I'd heard. I didn't personally know. I wasn't like a, a, a customer, but I had heard. I didn't question it. Well, the funniest thing now, if that really was his hustle, he'd be broke. <laughs> now, yeah. He could be selling a hydroxychloroquine and making a billion dollars right now, but that's very funny. You can have that joke. I love. Thank that. you, thank you. <laughs> He's just standing out there, like I'm still in business. Where are my customers, yo? But you know, you said like old school lineups and stuff. Mike, my mom, the 15 years ago when I got married, the first time she'd ever been on a plane and been out here was for my wedding. And uh, Jamie Masada, the owner of the Laugh Factory. Said, hey, buddy, what can I give you for your wedding, buddy? And I said, Jamie, you know, I'm not on the lineup this week. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there this week. But if my mom's going to be here from Kentucky and she's never been here, if you could put my fucking name on the marquee, Jamie, that would be the wedding present. Because my name had been up there, which I was proud of, but my mom had never seen it. And she'd never been on the Sunset Strip. So he did. He put my name on the marquee that week. He was like, hey, Stevie D. And I wasn't even going to be there that week. And um, at the end of the week, after my wedding, I said, Mom, what, what did you like most? She goes, well, I liked your wedding. I liked you getting married. I liked seeing your name up on that sign up there. So she, so that, that made her weak. That's good, brother. And now your name's on the sign all the time, and you don't even think about it. Well, it's not all the time. You know, it's your fault that it's back on any sign. It's all your fault. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest achievements in the comedy world, I believe, is to have your name on the Comedy Store Marquee, Laugh Factory Marquee, of course, the Improv too, and the Ha Ha. You get yeah. on all four of those things, that's it. You're a major success story. You can quit. <laughs> you can. 
Well, that's what I said in my, in my book, The Transom Diaries, Mike. I said, you know, I moved out here and I started doing comedy and I would drive by the Laugh Factory and I'd look up and go, you know, you can be doing all these little, you know, these little gigs all over town, coffee shops or, you know, sports bars or strip, whatever it is. But until your name is on one of those marquees, you're not, you're not on the A-team, bro. You ain't you're shit. Still, you're, you're still in the fucking farm league. You're still you know playing saying? Masters Cabaret. <laughs> yeah, which, which we did with pride. We had a good time. But I remember when it was first on there, I just wanted to stand on Sunset. I just wanted to stand on Sunset Boulevard. Hey, everybody, how you doing? That's me. It's, it's me up there. But you have headlined all over the country, buddy, and you're one of the biggest headliners in the country. And so, I mean, you fucking sell out cruise ships and theaters. And so what have you been doing during the quarantine, man? I learned how to do this shit right here. Well, during the quarantine, man, I tried to write a new, a bunch of new shit, and I made a bunch of videos starring me, myself, and myself and me because nobody else would come over. <laughs> so I formulated my own characters. And I did my I own thing. Everybody. But I, uh, I just did a couple of shows on tour. It was nice to go back into the stage, <laughs> and I hope uh, things turn around so I can get back doing live performing there's nothing better than live performing i don't think it's going to be uh um fulfilling that's you what i was just saying that antoinette antoinette was just on you know before you and she you introduced me to her and yeah. like her energy was so infectious when she gets on stage and she smiles and you can do that all day on your zooms or whatever but to see people smile back at you in person or to see something that you came up with in your brain, and then it resonates with the audience. Like, I've seen you, like, literally crack up to tears because I know you're feeling the energy of the crowd. You say something so goddamn funny, and the, uh, the energy is just, they're with you at that moment. I know, and there's nothing you could do about it, and it's going to be one of the best things when it comes back around because even just doing these small shows that I did, getting back to go on, getting back to the game. Um, you can't stop laughing at your own routines because yeah. you start to think, wow, I wrote this. This is funny. <laughs> I haven't this said some, it in so long. This is so cool. Some wacky so shit great. I thought of. Now, do you yeah. run your material by anyone before you do it on stage, Mike? Nah. You know what I did, too, when I went on this particular last tour? Um I just wanted to talk about me, and that's it. So I didn't really run it by anybody or ask anybody's opinion. So I stayed away from certain things that suck in the world today. Yeah. And I just went into uh, where I was and what I was doing. And then I started laughing so hard at my own work <laughs> that, people, that people were like, you know, what's the matter with this guy? He's fucking nice. <laughs> the fucking guys. <laughs> laughing over the corner with this latte over there. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was great. It really was great. And I hope, hope everything goes back to at least somewhat of a norm because what they did at these particular places, instead of having 100 people, they'd have 50. Instead they of having 50, 200. They sort of spread everybody out? Yeah. So what, what sucks and, about, uh, like, the HaHa, -Ha, Mike and I produce a show once a month at the HaHa -Ha North Hollywood, and uh, – we have a good time, but what sucks is when they try to open back up for a week and then there's so many fucking, there's so many restrictions. I know you did a live stream from the Laugh Factory and how was that not to have the audience in front of you? It sucks. It ruins your timing because you don't know if anybody's laughing or not. Because you and can you riff. Don't, you don't, you yeah, don't you have that say, beat. There's no beat. Yeah. <laughs> because you can say something funny and if they're laughing, you can just expand on that for a little bit you can just have fun with it in that moment yeah won't even know if they're laughing or not it's yeah torture. yeah we'll get I back to this to show i have to do a show saturday night oh that's that's crazy funny <laughs> i have to do a show saturday night buddy and it's in front of a bunch of cars at a parking lot what do you mean it's at a drive-in theater drive-in movie theater oh wow they've been doing that with artists they've been doing that with, with musical groups and stuff yeah, I know. And so you know how I'm going to know whether the people are laughing or not? They're going to beep the horn. Oh, yeah? Are you going to tell them that? Beep, 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 beep. Flash the high beams? What would really suck is if they don't beep the horn, and I don't hear nothing. 
but crickets. <laughs> they might be real crickets because you're outside in the field. <laughs> if you hear a car starting and driving away, then it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to have that shitty little speaker you used to put on the window, right? Remember that? <laughs> I don't know how they do it. I think it goes through your phone. Yes, it's high tech. Now, I remember when I was a teenager, I had one of those speakers as a souvenir because I drove away and ripped it out of the fucking post. <laughs> hey, man, I wish I, I had that, man. I would, love, I would love to have that. That was cool. Good, good times. Like now probably, they're doing gigs, like you just said. Where's the gig you're doing in the, the drive-in? Uh, Monmouth Racetrack, New Jersey. Okay, because now they're doing, like in Ventura, they just had an artist. You pay by the car load. So instead of oh, paying yeah. per person, per head, you pay 100 bucks and you roll in. And I'm like, shit, me and my buddy used to have a van with 42 people in the van. We paid 12 bucks to get in. Now you're going to have like an SUV roll in with <laughs> 10 people in the trunk. <laughs> Party of one. <laughs> hey, well, there's more people in that right car. Here, brother. I miss these days with you and you and I and Jack. The ha -ha. I wonder how he's doing. Well, you know, he's got, he's got, he's in good spirits. Uh, I just came back from Austin last week and I'm like, Jack, shit, they're open for business back there in Austin and, and you have all the comedy connections in the world. It's like doing this. You and I have been in the game for so long. We could just text a couple of people or call a couple of people. I'm like, Hey bro, you want to be on my show this week? And you can, you can open a business. You can open a brick and mortar business, a comedy club. But if you don't have those connections, you're going to have some fucking empty seats. So I was telling Jack, I'm like, bro, go, to, go rent a little space right now where they're open somewhere and bring in these headliners like Mike Marino. They would rock it. I would love to go to Austin. Did you get on stage at all? No, I just went to see a, a good friend of ours, uh, Petrelli. You know, he was all last year. He was out on the road with uh, – you know, Sebastian on a Scalco, but he's back there. He has a family. He moved from, from L.A. A lot of people were bailing. I don't know if you heard uh, Joe Rogan, you know, sold his podcast for like $100 million. He's going to Austin. No shit. So you and I need to get the U-Haul. The I get the Trans Am to put in the U-Haul. That's pretty, that's pretty much all I need, and, you know, we can move camp. But I love L.A., man. I, I, we came out here chasing the California dream. I'm fortunate to meet people like you, and, uh, and we're gonna, you know, this is gonna, this too shall pass, and we'll we'll bring the funny back. I'm not giving up on LA. I got my place out there. I got a friend of mine staying in my place. I'm here in my office in New Jersey. There's my Walk of Fame, all my albums and shit. I love it. And I'm gonna stay happy, stay joyful. I'm not dead yet, and hopefully, when there's a turn of events, we'll get back on stage and start making fun of. Uh, I don't know, something called COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be time. I'm drinking we'll hydroxychloroquine right now. I'm drinking hydroxychloroquine. I've I'm been like drinking hot. I've been drinking that for years. <laughs> you know we put in our body in the 90s, man? Let me tell you something. This shit. When I first started drinking hydroxychloroquine, I was <laughs> bald. Look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you, brother. Everybody, check out. One of the most downloaded comedy clips of all time was Mike was on Byron Allen Comics Unleashed, right? Yeah. And how yep. many hits did that get? Gazillions? That particular one got 14 million. I got this new one out live from the Laugh Factory, just hovered around 7 million. Buddy? And I'm still broke. Your plus, if I could just be your plus one for the rest of life, I'd be happy. You could be my plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike Marino. Everybody, New Jersey's bad boy, one of the top touring comics in the country. When we're going to be back in business soon, Mike and I produce a show at the Ha Ha in North Hollywood. Book your tickets. That shit's going to be sold out. Mike Marino, everybody. Oh, wrong one, buddy. Hold on. There you go. Mike Marino. All right, buddy. Love you, man. Love you too, man. See ya. Come on, get happy. This next comic is on fire, y'all. He's got uh, two different shows going. One's called A Fine Night of Comedy on Instagram, IG Live. The other one he's going to tell you about, it's fine something. I can tell you that shit is fine. That shit is so fine. <laughs> We've been buddies for more than probably 20 years, 25 years. You've seen him on Tonight Show and all kinds of funny shit like that. Well, Wayne Brothers. 
That's a good one. Fresh Prince. Look at that, man. I did homework. All right, everybody, give it up for the one and only Bruce Fire. What's up, buddy? Stevie D. What's up, buddy? Everything's good, buddy. Lots of good things happening, even though the world's falling apart around us. I love that you're, bring, you're bringing comedy and music to, uh, to the world. That's right. From, from, uh, from West Hills, California. <laughs> Sorry, I just told everybody where you live. You know what? I believe I've made it, because today, Katie found a fake Facebook page. She's like, what is this? I'm like, what? And it was like someone had created a fake Facebook, I'm like, shit, I take that as a compliment. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Until the restraining orders come in, anyway. Somebody's uh, trying to cash in on the, on, on the brand, bro. Some creep, and they use like, my, Joe, my Joe Exotic uh, profile picture. I'm like, let me send them a better picture than that, man. That's not even a good fake profile picture. What's next for Netflix? How do they top Tiger King, man? You got to go to Kentucky and find some people for them. It was, I thought it was perfect timing because it was like, a month into it, and I'm like, shit, I'm out of things to do. What's this Tiger King all about? And then I watched it, and then I burned through all the episodes. And like two months now, it's been like crickets because he's, he's really in prison, dropping the soap on purpose. <laughs> there, there's been a lot of good stuff to catch up on, though, on, on, on Netflix and other places. I, I binged it one night. Would you all the Tiger King? I started, I started at 11.30 p.m. And I watched the first episode with my boys, and they're teenagers. So like, okay, yeah, whatever, Dad, that's cool. And they're done after one episode. And I stayed, I watched episode two, and then I, three, and like four. I'm like, I'm tired, but I got to see what happens next. <laughs> I watched all six, and I've been on a crazy sleep pattern ever since. I blame Joe Exotic you, uh, for messing up my sleep pattern. You're like, did that bitch really fit, beat her husband to a cat? Come on, man, to a tiger? So obvious, bro. It's so obvious. And she's like, Remember the brother, you, like, the brother, the like, cop, the brother, the brother helped cover it up. Nobody <laughs> knows how to cover stuff up better than cops. So, than cops. remember when the tiger bit his ankle and he's like, "Somebody put olive oil on my shoe," and she's like, "No, you put oregano, egg, <laughs> then you need a meat grinder." Like, oh wait, hold on. Oh wait, go too far. <laughs> hypothetically, it is hypothetically. That's what you would do. She yeah, uh, and the, and the fact that she found some. Some old sugar daddy at the end that would that would believe anything that she said because it's the first time the guy's probably, you know, seen a female tiger in years. If you know what <laughs> so I mean, she played her card. She was yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so you find a, a rich catch fever. You the find a rich catch yeah. Fever. No better business than uh, finding a rich lonely guy for uh, some of those women out there. No better business than that. Woo, it's big business out here where we are, buddy. West Hills. <laughs> But you're, you're not out here. I mean, over there, over the hill, Beverly Hills. I know, West Hills, bro. Watch out. No, I'm not West Hills. <laughs> not the, I'm not going to tell everybody where you live, but there is a Chick-fil-A about I've, I've, eight minutes away. I've heard <laughs> West Hills nine times already. Not the real Housewives of Calabasas. Speaking of real Housewives, what was Katie that show you were on with Kevin, Kevin Hart? Oh, man, real, that was uh, The Real Husbands of Hollywood. That was Real Husbands. Great episode, by the way, where um, uh, the fighter, what's, what was the fighter's name? Um, uh, uh, Sh Sugar Shane Mosley? No, no, no. Who was on there? Let me find that picture. It, uh, in that episode, Kevin um, got into it yeah. with, with Mosley. Sugar Shane Mosley. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and uh, I think he was talking to Mosley's girl, and Mosley didn't like it. And it was innocent, but it turned into this. And then so um, now they're going to have a fight for charity. And uh, for and Kevin's charity is uh, children with Tourette's. <laughs> okay, and you can and just imagine. I mean, the comedy it, it went everywhere. You go. Oh, I hope they don't go there. And they went there. I played like a boxing reporter that was very tough. Tough news. I was, uh, you know, questioning the woman that was with Mosley whether her, her, uh, you know, you know, what do you know about boxing? Oh, what are you doing here? And um, it was a funny scene, but it was, you know. And that one scene, the whole cast was in there. So you got Mosley and um, uh, Nick Cannon and um, uh, Kevin and Dwayne Martin and Chris Spencer and Buddy Lewis were in the scene, I think, okay. doing guest stars. And um, who's I'm trying to think of um, the uh, 
the uh, the guy from Curb Enthusiasm. Uh, Jeff. Jeff Garland? No. He's Larry on, David? He's on Real Husbands. Every other word is, every other word is MF. Show me a picture again. Show me that picture again. Hold on. I'm looking for another picture of Kevin Hart. Oh, the comedian. Oh, shit. Anyways. Hold on. All right. All right, I can find that. No, JB Smooth. JB Smooth. I could. JB Smooth is the best, man. JB, I apologize. I know why I blocked on your name, brother. You are hilarious. He um, is, man. Anyways, yeah, they were all. It was all. They were all in that scene. It was so much. It was so much. You know, box office in that one scene. It's crazy. TV That's box. A lot. When you when you got okay. the clout that Kevin Hart has, he can just pick up the phone and say, "JB Smooth, let's let's do this." You're not gonna give up on uh, that search for Kevin Hart picture, huh? Now, yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you, uh, I went to a, a car show with Colin, you know, my son, and I saw Kevin Hart. This is not long after his accident. And, like, people are just, like, fucking freaking out because he's got, he's got some badass hot rods. I'm sure he just, like, writes a check and makes me, you know, make me the baddest 67 Mustang fastback in the world, and boom, it shows up. And so he's there, like, he's doing shit. And I'm like, yo, what's up, Kevin? He's like, hey, man. Of course, every time I see him, you know, like, Every time I see him somewhere after mine, you know, Stevie D. Oh, hey, man, what's up? What's up? What's up? You have to remind, you know, I tell my son, hey, what's up? I'm, like, yeah, I'm like, Kevin, you know, yeah, yeah. Laugh at you, what's up, bro? And he's yeah, like, hey, hey. Like, like he remembers me. And so we swing back around with, with Colin, my son. I go, I go, Kevin, man, can, uh, can I get a picture of you and my son? And he was like, ah, oh. he's like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't really want to start that. I really, you know, he goes, I'll tell you what, take a picture with your son and let me photobomb. Smart. And, and so he did. He goes, he didn't really want to cause any like pose and shit. And it would have turned into every, everyone wants one, right? Yeah. Everyone wants one. They would have been done. So I was just yeah. acting like I was taking a picture with Colin in front of uh, Kevin's car. And That's Kevin funny. jumps in the back like this. And it was even funnier because I posted it like, who the fuck is this guy photobombing? Just trying to pick, take a picture of my son. So annoying when Kevin Hart just photobombed oh, a photo with Colin. <laughs> Everywhere I go, you know? Hilarious. But buddy... You've been getting some killer lineup, some killer uh, talent on your Tuesday night show. Instagram live at Bruce Fine, Tuesday nights at 7, a fine night for comedy and music. We have comedy, music, celebrity interviews. We, uh, we bring it back, throwback. We have, uh, uh, we're an escape from all the crazy stuff out there. Not, not, not much different from you. It's, um, uh, I do have a lot of live music, you know, also uh, from people across the country that perform uh, live and uh, sing and play guitar or piano. And um, it adds, it makes Tuesday nights fun again. I love you Tuesday. I did your show once, I think. You did? I think of course was, you did. That was during the heat of uh, Joe Exotic. And I think I did a little bit of I Saw a Tiger. A little tribute. A little tribute. Yeah, 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 of course. And it brought a tear, but a little tear right there to my eyes. <laughs> to all so Bruce Wine, I've known and you then, for so long, brother. And yeah, yeah. I, I have another show. Yeah, yeah, I do. And I want to tell you, I have a show called A Fine Show. Okay. Similar to A Fine Night, but um, it is same kind of show, and it's coming to Facebook and YouTube this month. So look for that, and it's comedians, musicians, celebrity interviews. I already uh, just interviewed Wendy Liebman. Uh, um, I want my Lauren, Lauren Francesca. Oh, sorry, my ring went off in the middle of the interview. Sorry about that. Someone, someone's at my mailbox. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, yeah, it might be that. <laughs> Might be that one of those stalkers. The stalker. Yeah, the guy that took your page I, over. I sent him out, out to me. I sent him to Encino, California. Hey, There's what? Coffee bean. You talking about behind I'm in the Boston. coffee bean, I'm, like two blocks behind the coffee I'm, bean. I'm here in Boston. What are you talking about? <laughs> you see that picture behind me of me and David Letterman? Oh wow. That's a good one, right? That's the new David, right? With the yeah. Santa beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. November twenty nineteen uh, Letterman. Yeah, he's uh it was great. I got to actually tell him how much he meant to me and my friends um, and to his face. I mean, I like told him like about how me and three other guys blew off class, rented a car, scraped up 20 bucks between the four of us and drove to New York and waited in line and got into the anniversary show at Radio City Music Hall in you like, did? in like 80, 84, 85. And um, actually 80, it was, it was the fall of 84. It might've been the first, anniversary show he had at Radio City Music Hall. And I started telling him who was in the band. I was like, Astrid Simpson was singing backup. Billy Joel was on the keyboards with Paul. Tom Scott was on the horns. And he was looking at me like, holy shit, you're like bringing me <laughs> back, bro. 
And then he grabbed my arm and he was like, that was really, but he, he was so letterman. He's like, that was really neat. That was really neat. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad you shared that with me. Thank you. And it was what? awesome. That's it's like meeting your that. hero and telling him like about like some, some stuff that when you first fell in love with them and comedy and yeah. then, and yeah. they're like, Oh shit. Thanks. You know, it was crazy. Yeah. I'm here because of you. Um, Part of the reason. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's so cool. Like I grew up like, you, you know, you heard me talk, talk about my uncle Ricky in Kentucky and he was only like six or seven years older than me. So my mom would give him five bucks to take me to a Disney movie. He would take me to Cheech and Chong. There you go. And so like that, that introduction into comedy of Cheech and Chong, I'm like, shit, these guys are like doing some illegal shit, but it's funny, but it's also resonating. So when I, I got to meet uh, Tommy Chong and I ended up producing a, a reality show that was a pilot, never got picked up, but, but he signed my Uncle Ricky's like motto in life was blaze on, fucking blaze on, man. It's all good, just blaze on. So Amazing. he signed a headshot to my Uncle Ricky said, Uncle Ricky, blaze on. And I sent it to my Uncle Ricky. I'm like, bro, you don't know. That's, you know, you don't know what that means to me. That's like the Mount Rushmore. That's fucking. That's what I call a full circle moment. You came full circle with getting, you know, Tommy to write to Uncle Ricky. That's the full circle moment. You know, me telling David Letterman what he meant to me. Yeah. A full circle yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's only a few of those in life. Yeah, there's a few idols. Like, I geek out. Like, I like, like. Dick Van Dyke, who lives close to me, I'm not seeing where I live, but Dick Van Dyke is in the, you've already said nine times where I live, but Dick Van Dyke is in the vicinity. And one day his car caught on fire on the one on one. Havenhurst in West Hill. <laughs> <laughs> 2086 uh, Havenhurst. <laughs> Goodness. So, Dick Van, uh, Dyke's, Dick Van yeah. Dyke's car caught on, on fire right here, the 101 Calabasas. I'm oh, like, wow. I could have saved him. I could have saved Dick Van Dyke. God damn it. Was he okay? Should he, should he bang bang? Was he's okay, but he's like 112, so I got to meet him pretty soon. Or shit, man. What are you drinking? Oh, by the way, the drinking word, my producer, Judy Sketch Lewinson, is, uh, she told me to remind everybody, I think it's old school tonight. So old school. You and I are old school, brother. Old school. So when I say old school, you say you old get, school. You want to get almond milk, coconut milk, spirulina, maca powder, whey protein, and some chia seeds, and a banana from your That's like drink. my morning. That's my shit. I, I do like a turbo. I do two drinks in the morning, Bruce. I do one. That's like my... Uh, that's like my super immune booster to kill any virus. So it's uh, Bragg's apple cider vinegar. Sketch. You're gonna can you write this down on the screen? Bragg's mother's unfiltered apple cider vinegar. All right. Oh, I already do that first thing. This is after you do that. that. Yeah. Then you put fresh lemon, fresh squeezed lemon. All right. Me and you had this discussion right. before. I told you what I put in mine, and it's close to you. Okay. So you do right. you do the organic apple cider vinegar and the lemon, and cayenne pepper. And the cayenne pepper. I do all three of those. You know what else? Go ahead. Is that it? You know what the cayenne pepper does? It kicks the shit in gear and flushes Digestive up. track. Set yes. Up. So then, after that, my breakfast is uh, uh, Shakeology is a good protein powder. Also, uh, there's an organic one at Costco. We do that. Chia seeds, hemp seeds, frozen blueberries, avocado, a frozen banana, and almond milk. Boom! Fucking turbocharged. The reason both of us look twenty years younger than we are is because of this kind of stuff. I've been, I've been, yeah, I've been you know, doing it. As, you, know, you, you a lot of time. You were, and, you were like a Chippendale, so you know, I'm just trying to keep up with you, brother. I was, a, I was a wrestling champion, a high school and college wrestling champion. I was, a, I know that man. I, I was a state champion in freestyle, and I was uh, went to the junior nationals in college. I was a division one wrestler at BU. I was a, also a world ranked power lifter. Did you know I was ranked 90th in the world in men's powerlifting? I did not. At age 14. No shit. Come at on. At age 14, I was 90th in the world in men's the powerlifting. The low center of gravity. That's what it was, low center of gravity. I squat. I went to some contests. I won, I won, um, I won the American uh, United States Bench Press Competition. I won the, the Eastern uh, United States Powerlifting Championships. After I won the Eastern uh, U.S. Championships, my numbers – Got submitted to Powerlifting USA, and it turned out from my first contest where I squatted 300 and deadlifted three and a quarter and bench pressed 160, 
I was actually ranked 90th in the world with those numbers. Keep in mind, keep in mind, Bulgaria and Russia and Turkey, all those kids were on steroids already. By those kids were well. jacked up, man. Those kids were jacked up. I was all natural. Now all natural, Bray. I love it. All right, so on your organic apple cider drink. Here's the three things, Stevie, that you can add right. to this drink. This, yeah. this drink of champions. What this drink does, as you know, it's a natural energy booster. It also sets up your digestive tract for the day. Uh, disclaimer, we are not uh, licensed health counselors or, uh, or, or anything, but we just know this stuff because we know it. And we I'm not licensed in anything. Okay. That's right. In fact, they don't have a driver's license with that drink. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> So um, I told somebody about the drink, and then this one woman was like, well, that is terrible to drink. Add some honey because the yeah, honey is, yep. you know, nax, na it's a natural uh, antioxidant, and also uh, it's okay to have a little bit of honey with all that other uh, vinegar and everything to, for, yep. for balance, for pH balance. And when you add some honey and you mix it all up, you can actually, it tastes fine. You know, it's not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. so that's good. And then the other two things is Himalayan pink salt. When you wake that's up. That's not even a real thing. I thought this, the pink salt is only Himalayan. You're just making that shit up now. I'm not kidding. You, you can get it. <laughs> it, it, it yeah, yeah. You can get it at Smart and Final even. In a no, okay. All right. And the third thing is turmeric powder, which you know is Tumeric, like. Yeah. We have that. I do that. Yeah. I do that. Turmeric separate. powder is. Most people know from Indian food, but it's been around for, you know, um, centuries. And yep. it's natural antioxidant. It's a um, anti-inflammatory. I don't yep. have to tell you, bro. You're, you're inflamed all the time from those. Uh, Bam. So, so anyways, uh, if you add turmeric powder. So I do turmeric powder, cayenne, and the pink salt. Those three. So I got those three. The vinegar, the lemon, the honey. Now oh. you're in business. Now you're in business. First thing, 12 <laughs> ounces of water at least. Drink that, wait yep. 20 minutes, wait 20 minutes, don't do anything, don't, don't put anything else in your body, and then you can have your shake and your drink, and then yeah. And also what I do, one more thing is I, I rinse I'm gonna my tell mouth. You, I'll, tell, I'll tell the people on your show, I'm older than Stevie D. I don't know about that, I don't know about that. But I'll I'm tell old. people your home address, I'll tell people your home address. Yeah, by the way, just message me at, at Bruce Fine, I'll give, give you his uh, date of birth and his address. <laughs> don't do that. Did you... Did you hear me say I got the fake idea? Or I, got I, the fake you, I, did, account? I could also tell you his other fake Facebook uh, accounts that I've been following. Dude, I'm so, I'm so, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's freaky. I'm, I'm so honored yeah. I got a fake Facebook, you know, I kind of am until the, uh, yeah. uh, like, I, like I said, the restraining orders come in. Uh, until then, though, that was, that was pretty good. The thing I wanted to tell you um, about, you know, being our age, you have to go to the annual exam for your doctor. And I just have a little advice for, like, the medical you know, community, yes. Yes. you know, everyone has to adapt. We don't do everything the same way they did for our fathers and grandfathers, the way we drive our cars, the way we handle our business or anything, the way we build a house, we always improve. But the doctors, the medical community hasn't improved some things. For instance, every year <laughs> we have to have a prostate check, which is very important, Stevie, as you know, Transgender diaries. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get in there and, you know, the nurse is doing the blood. They send in the nurse. Like, she's the opening act. All right, she's the opening act. <laughs> hey, how we doing, yeah. everybody? <laughs> she's the opening act. She's doing the questions, the height, weight, and she gets the blood pressure thing. We gotta get your blood pressure, and you know, before the doctor comes in. So you know, she's like, "Hey, are you anxious? Your 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 blood pressure is a little higher than normal." I'm like, "Yeah, because I know the headliner's coming. I know what he's up to. I know what he's up to, Doctor Strange Glove. So uh, yeah, maybe you know, maybe my blood pressure's up. So I'm thinking, first of all, they got the order wrong." The order's yeah. all wrong. The doctor yeah, yeah. should come in, do what he's got to do, then get, then you relax, the blood pressure goes down. Now I yeah, take yeah. my blood pressure, take my levels. Now I'm good. You know? Yeah. I got he my annual finger go. bang. You happy, guys? He needs to come, <laughs> he needs to come in and say, your shoe's untied. You're like, what? Exactly. Hey, what? hey, hey maybe a little trickery. Yeah. <laughs> a little trickery. <laughs> Make trickery legal. Tri and, uh... Trickery. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they do it in Kentucky. That's how they do it in Kentucky. Check um, under the and, hood. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, like, I mean, it's so cold. Like, they need to – women, they say – they tell me, women tell me, women talk to me. 
You know, women talk. They, women talk Especially now, I'm single. So women talk to me, and they're like, you know, the doctors, when we have to have the forceps or the, you know, the exams, that are, you know, they make nice lighting, they play nice music, they're gentle. Like, our doctors are not. Like, I don't, every doctor has to have a life and a hobby outside of being a doctor. I don't know what my doctor's hobby is, but I'm pretty sure he's a, he's a bowler. I think he's a bowler. <laughs> This guy, he's looking for strikes and spares. He's deep. He's hard. I'm like, yeah. are we getting married or are we just going to get this over? What's going on? Anyways, but then afterwards, Stevie, and you know this. And you know this, man. You know this. He's like, all right, uh, pull up your pants. We're done. Right? And then, and then he like, he does this. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, it's for you. Here's your little Why? tissue. You little tissue. There you go, you dirty okay. little. That's that's for you. Slut. Yeah. It's, you fit so cheap. They need to warm it up. You whoa. It's weird. Is I still call my doctor like once a month and like, can we check my prostate? Can I just stop by or, you know, you haven't called me. He's like, you you don't even have a prostate anymore. That's like, well, you know. Yeah, but you have cute Asian doctors, so I'd like to check. Yeah, there you go, little fingers. There's the picture I was looking for with Kevin Hart. Oh, that's great. I remember that one. I've seen that. Yeah, that's classic. Photo bombing. There he is. Well, thanks, Stevie D. It's been amazing. Uh, seeing, yeah, keep it up, Tuesday buddy. Night, a fine night of uh, comedy on Instagram with Brian uh, Bruce Fine. And what's your new one? Uh, a fine show. Uh, YouTube.com slash a fine show. Okay. So hey, buddy, keep up the good vibes and the good health, brother. Thank you, buddy. Same to you. And I'm going to add those few little, I don't think the, the, what was the sweat from a Norwegian pig's testicle? What was the one you added? That Turmeric powder and yeah, Himalayan yeah. salt and honey, baby. You got it. You got All it. All right. You can have it tomorrow. It, you got that Stay tomorrow. Healthy, brother. You too, brother. Love you. Be fine. Love you, Stevie. Come on, get happy. Everybody, that was a hell of an old school show. One more, one more for the road. Cause I don't have to drive anywhere. Trans M's in the garage. I may just go sit in and play the A track, but everybody want to throw it to my co-producer and my homie for 20 plus years. My partner in crime. She's going to take you out with some old school hits. This is Judy sketch. Lewinson. We'll see you next week. Come on. Get happy hour. Y'all. You're in the mix with Judy
Follow Judy Moo on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at I am Judy Lou.